Today on the Saved Gen Z, I discuss the rise in anti-Semitism with MPP Roman Baber. Hi, and welcome to the show. We have unfortunately seen a rise in anti-Semitism in Canada in the last month. Various anti-Semitic attacks and protests have been seen, and this is very alarming. Today, I have the privilege to be speaking with Roman Baber. He is a member of Provincial Parliament for York Centre, a riding that is heavily populated by Jewish Canadians. He himself is a proud Jewish Canadian and has lived in the Soviet Union and Israel before becoming a Canadian. We will be discussing this rise in anti-Semitism and how we can put an end to it. Before we get started with our interview, please subscribe if you haven't already and consider hitting that notification bell. All right, uh, so Roman, thank you so much for joining me today to discuss uh, anti-Semitism. It's my pleasure. So uh, how about we start off um, maybe with you telling us a bit about who you are and why you got into politics. Sure. My name is Roman Baber, and I'm the member of provincial parliament for the writing of York Centre, which is located geographically in uh, the west side of North York in Toronto. I'm blessed to represent one of the largest Jewish constituencies in the country. And um, I myself, um, um, I am Jewish. I was, I'm, uh, was born in the Soviet Union uh, when I was eight, we moved to Israel. And uh, when I was 15, we moved to Canada, directly to York Center, uh, the writing which I now represent. And um, subsequent to a career in law, I um, decided to focus my passion on public service. Um, helping people is one of the greatest things one can do. And uh, help my community is, um, is, is a wonderful uh, thing to do, especially given the difficulties we're facing right now, uh, be it anti-Semitism, um, economic challenges, and now with COVID, um, public service is a calling, and I have been blessed to be able to answer that calling. Absolutely. Uh, so how has your experience been uh, being a Jewish Canadian, and have you or your family ever faced anti-Semitism here in Canada? I can say that, but for a few isolated incidents, uh, which I would not make anything of, we are mm-hmm. largely blessed to live in a country that is essentially free of um, systemic antisemitism. Mm-hmm. That is very important because um, we enjoy full opportunity as Canadians uh, to avail ourselves of all the blessings that our country has to offer. That is not to say, however, that we're not seeing a considerable uptick in anti-Semitism. Um, I, unfortunately, I do see it, uh, whether it's by way of graffiti on Twitter. Um, we, we do see an, a, the occasional act of violence. So while I have not experienced it in Canada and certainly not anywhere near to the extent that I've experienced it in Soviet Union, um, this is something that we have to be very mindful of right now and act upon. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so currently, as you mentioned, it's rising and a lot of people are attacking or criticizing uh, Zionism and a Zionist, maybe without even knowing what the term means. Uh, so can you explain uh, what it means to be a Zionist and if anti-Zionism is the same thing as anti-Semitism? I, I think that... Various academics are probably better suited to comment on the definition of Zionism than I am. However, uh, my I would suggest that Zionism is basically the mystical and the historic connection of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. Mm-hmm. It is it is our it is ingrained in our history in our culture to love Eretz Israel, and that connection cannot be uh, refuted. And so with few very fringe exceptions, to be Jewish 
is to be a Zionist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, one of the movements that's gaining ground right now is the BDS movement, uh, and they're spreading misinformation about the state of Israel, and especially when it comes to its military. Uh, so um, do you think that false information about Israel puts Jewish Canadians at a greater risk of being victims of anti-Semitism? Absolutely. Um, when the state of Israel is a, a, a democratic, a, a, a shining beacon of democracy in the Middle East, uh, with with full participation of all <clears throat> racial minorities in its economy, in its political system, in its judiciary, a state that upholds the rule of law without exception, um, when it is vilified as a state that commits hate crimes or or crimes against humanity, uh, then that certainly, regretfully, has uh, implications for the Jewish community abroad and for the Jewish community in Canada. And uh, there is no question that um, the two are related. And so it's very important for us to not fear, but um, attack the problem and the um, pattern of misinformation where it arises. Not be afraid to use the word Zionism, not be afraid to use the word Israel. And, and instead, mm -hmm. speak to our friends, speak to our colleagues, speak to students, uh, and, and to make sure that our voice is heard uh, and our community is heard, not, not just in terms of um, helping the situation in the Middle East, but also preserving and helping the safety of our community. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, so uh, one notable anti-Semitic incident that we saw was uh, Toronto's uh, Food Vendors Eatery and its owner, Kimberly Hawkins. Uh, Hawkins had put signs outside of her business which said, defund Israel and free Palestine. Then she went on inst Instagram and used the hashtags, Zionists not welcomed. Uh, what message do you have to, uh, for people like Kimberly Hawkins? And uh, what kind of repercussions should people like her be facing for their anti-Semitic uh, actions? I uh, regretfully am well familiar with this incident uh, and have commented on it um, on my social media and in fact will do so again today um, or, or over the next 48 hours. The outburst and uh, the suggestion that folks are not welcome uh, into an establishment uh, because of their creed, uh, because of their persuasion um, is hateful and unacceptable mm -hmm. and we must condemn it in the strongest terms possible i see no difference between um food vendors posting on its instagram that zionists not welcome into their store and a sign on a, a restaurant in western or eastern europe uh midway through the last century suggesting that jews are not welcome mm -hmm. uh, i i see no difference and so in terms of repercussions, I can tell you that personally, I have filed a complaint with municipal standards at the city of Toronto, municipal life standards, uh, to suggest that I'm of the view um, that food vendors has violated uh, its, the city of Toronto code and bylaws and that their license to operate should be revoked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we live in a country where we can express ourselves, but that doesn't mean that we should be hateful or discriminatory towards any group of people, uh, because that's just you know wrong and it's un-Canadian. Uh, so uh, do you think that our governments are doing enough to combat this rise of anti-Semitism? And if not, then what additional measures should Canadian governments uh, and society be taking to successfully combat anti-Semitism? I think, um... I think it, it's a challenging proposition, but one that is necessary. So I can tell you, in terms of our government, uh, we have a number we have a number of initiatives in place. Um, I can tell you that I have presented a bill, a private member's bill to the legislature, uh, prohibiting uh, hateful demonstrations at Queens Park every single year. Um, there's an Oakwood demonstration on the mm -hmm. legislative grounds where uh, pronouncements of hate and anti-Semitism are rampant, 
and I'm of the view that such uh, such uh, pronouncements should not be happening. Um, freedom of speech is sacred, but even speech has limits, and that limit is incitement to violence. So that is unacceptable. We have another piece of legislation brought by MPP Will Bauma and um, MP Robin Martin, Bill 168, in which we um, in which we seek to define anti-Semitism, uh, importing the IRA definition um, to be used by our government uh, as we evaluate conduct by organizations, by academic institutions, and um, and entities that do business with the province of Ontario. And um, my view is simple, and, and that's where really we should be going, is that if we find that an entity uh, engages in BDS or uh, somehow in different manner spewing anti-Semitism uh, that the province should not be doing any business with it, whether it's by way of grants, um, trade, or any recognition or support. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a question now. This is a question that I, I tend to ask uh, politicians who are, have a faith. Uh, how does your faith in God um, you know, help you in your daily life as a politician and has helped you growing up and moving from different countries and I think I think it's important to state um, and whenever I try to explain uh, Judaism to to my friends who are not Jewish or at least my perspective on it is that our faith and my faith is private to me and mm -hmm. so as I go about my daily business uh, trying to help the people of this province trying to uphold the laws of this province um, I don't go out and say, look, uh, I'm Jewish and therefore, but to myself, I do think of some of our values uh, mm -hmm. of loving thy neighbor, of, of, uh, Rahmanis, of, of, merc of, of, of being mm -hmm. merciful towards people and that, mm -hmm. in a sense, to be tolerant of people, to, to respect human dignity and human life because we believe those two to be set, set, sacred. And so I am, I am guided um, by my faith in many of the decisions that I make and in my daily conduct. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, so uh, lastly, is there um, anything that you would like uh, my viewers uh, to take away from watching this interview? I want to encourage you and your viewers to continue doing the work that you do. I have seen how uh, students, university students, high school students, make a meaningful impact on their communities and their friends. Mm -hmm. We should not hesitate to call out evil. We should not hesitate to resist uh, moral relativism. Mm -hmm. We have to stand up, not just for the Jewish people, but for all people that are subject to to racial to racialized hate, and so continue to talk about it, continue to think about it, continue to ask questions about it. Have the confidence that you're allowed to express yourself. That is your right, as long as you do it respectfully. And you will be surprised what kind of an impact you can make on people. So I, I want to thank you sincerely for for this interview. Wish your viewers well and encourage them to continue along this path uh, of helping uh, overcome hate and anti-Semitism in the Jewish community and all communities at large. Uh, so uh, Roman, I wanna thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come and discuss this issue with me. And I wish you the best of luck and trying to pursue uh, justice for the Jewish community. And I hope to see you again on my show sometime in the near future. I'm uh, available for you and I thank you very much sincerely for this opportunity and wish you well. I hope that you enjoyed our conversation and that you took something away from it. To learn more about Roman Bader, check out a link to his website in the description. Also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you and God bless.